Okay. Thank you very much for coming to my talk. Um, my name is Piotr Krul. I'm founder of 3MD, Poland-based consulting company. Um, and I will talk about the challenges of building trustworthy Linux-based systems because I cooperate very often with um, hardware vendors building the laptops, building the um, uh, embedded devices and uh, desktops which are sold with Linux. And of course, we have a lot of problems with that. Um, we would like to have open source BIOS there and the cooperation in ecosystem is hard and I will tell you why. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Ross, Daniel, Andrew and Richard for reviewing this presentation uh, and giving feedback. This presentation heavily using abbreviations and uh, I don't have time for explaining of those. So if you have problem with understanding the word, you can also always get, get back here. I hope like many people who understand security topics know these uh, abbreviations, but if you don't, you can Google and find maybe better presentation to, to understand the topic. Okay. Um, so I guess like most of the topics I will talk about should be known to you, uh, but the goal of the presentation is to highlight the problem to, uh, to provide some inspiration and to work uh, as an anchor for future CFP process. We, always, we usually have problems getting correct people on board to talk about the, these technical topics, and that's kind of a way of inspiring and letting you know what's going on in various eco ecosystems, um, various communities, um, uh, related to this technical security topics. Um, yeah, and I hope I will, you will tell me I missed something and, and you will correct me uh, if I'm wrong. So first challenge uh, I think we face and uh, which is touched by many uh, projects today and many communities is uh, security assessment. Uh, we have um, growth of these security screens, um, which first one is from CubeOS, uh, second is from uh, GNOME um, device security settings, and third is from Plasma. Uh, it is all based on LVFS HSI. Um, there is also, in CubeOS, for example, there is also HCL based on which this security screen is created. There are also other communities which are trying to approach the topic, like uh, Free Software Foundation got Respect Your Freedom certification for the hardware. Which, um, which has unclear rules, uh, what is really free uh, in, in your laptop, in your, in your device, uh, what is the statement about the management engine, and so on and so on. Of course, they're trying to define that, they're trying to improve that, we talk with their lawyers, but there is a lot of, uh, a lot of work, and I, we see value in exposing some interfaces uh, which would help in um, assessing the security of uh, modern um, computer systems. So um, there is something already in Linux. For example, we have some interfaces for CPU vulnerability assessment, like this uh, SysFS stuff in Sys Devices System CPU vulnerabilities. Uh, it is nicely displayed by LSCPU. Um, there is also PROC CPU info, which is a little bit different, but, but still talking about the CPU vulnerabilities. But most of the tools which we have right now, now focus on x86 and UFI. Uh, and, uh, and we have today presentation that open firmware is not UFI. Um, and I guess like there are also other stacks that are not covered uh, in this, in, in, in this um, interfaces uh, informing us about the vulnerabilities. Um, so I guess we can only secure uh, our ecosystem if we knew what security mechanisms are available on a given hardware platform, and we can somehow know that from the from the system what's the state of the configuration of the platform. So we have this problem of shipping hardware with Linux um, challenge uh, because of lack of this interface. Um, so we, for example, would like to know. Uh, what kind of version of SBAT we have. Today we have talked also about SBAT. So we would like to know what kind of, what version of SBAT and if uh, correct revocation um, information were applied uh, during the boot process. Uh, we would like to realize um, um, we booting your favorite IB, IBV BIOS, U-boot with UFI payload, also talk today or whatever core boot with UFI play, payload. And with all those configuration, we would like to, in operating system, know what kind of security mechanisms were applied and what configuration was, was applied. And on the commercial side, on the proprietary operating system side, it's already happened. It's, they already implemented that. 
and they all already can provide information what's the security state of the mechanism on your, on your hardware. Uh, LVFS is, I think, uh, from one side, very good thing. From other side, it brings a lot of assumptions. For example, there's some arbitrary ranking of the uh, of those uh, checks. Um, there is uh, there is also like lack of activity in maintenance because there are new things that coming. Uh, the spec was written quite some time ago, and there are also limitations like we have this hypervisor-based operating system which are growing like CubeOS, XCPNG, Proxmox, and in those we also would like to have this information about security mechanism um, apply it and configuration apply it. So there are also some talks which, talk, uh, which uh, discuss this topic. Um, so embedded receipts talk about that, Trench Boot Summit, and there is subgroup in ARM system, um, system ARC, if anyone belongs to that, uh, there is discussion there. So that was first challenge. Another challenge is the uh, gap uh, created by uh, system management engine, and we can say to some extent other trusted execution and, uh, engines, uh, trusted execution environments um, lead to the same problem. Uh, so for various reasons, vendors have to add this trusted execution environment. Uh, they saying uh, they have to guarantee confi confi confidentiality and integrity of the code, uh, which is inside. Um, of course, this creates opportunities for the attackers. Uh, we know many attacks uh, presented by various security researchers like Alex Matrosov um, and other, um, um, other famous Black Hat uh, presenters about vulnerabilities in, those, in that space. So what are the solutions right now proposed? Uh, so there is SMI transfer monitor from Intel, unfortunately not integrated in Linux kernel. Uh, there is out of three module uh, written by um, Eugene Myers, uh, and and I know that Brian Delgado from Intel also contributed to that. I know that Project Mu, which is op which is Microsoft version of the fork of EDK or version of EDK2, um, uh, in already, already implements that, uh, but of course not everyone got Microsoft uh, BIOS um, on their laptops. Uh, so that's why we should think about how we could um, leverage that in, oper in operating system and uh, use that features to protect ourselves ag against um, system management threats. There was a very nice talk from Ron Minich from Corboot, uh, claiming that we should put uh, all the SMM code into the uh, kernel. A very nice talk. Uh, I really recommend that. This is a nice idea how to work around the problem. Uh, here are the links for two other talks, which talking about the SMI transfer monitor. And uh, yeah, I, we, we know that SMM by definition should not give direct access to the, uh, to the user, but uh, it needs to communicate somehow its state. Um, and we already know that there are valued other added vendor stuff, which mitigates some security, but this, this kind of looks like security by obscurity because those Documentation for those models like Intel PPAM or AMD SMM um, containerization uh, is locked, which I will talk about next slide. Yeah, and yeah, I, we, we, I think we should, we should uh, do something with that. And it's very hard to keep, um, keep it simple um, with such powerful extensions at hand like SMM. So, okay. All your hardware belong to us, challenge three. Uh, we have uh, kind of more and more components like, um, like Microsoft Pluton, this Intel PPAM, what we said, management engine from Intel, AMD PSP, and those uh, provide additional stuff, but unfortunately Linux gets little on or nothing of that. And of course, uh, uh, those components are created to protect us, to improve the security of the platform that that we're using. So for example, in MS Pluton, we have uh, imp implemented by Matthew uh, FTPM driver, um, but this, this chip does much, much more. It is hardware-based root of trust. It provides identity. It provides support po for attestation and various other features, which Linux cannot leverage because, because there is no documentation how to leverage that. And um, I guess like maybe, maybe we even don't want to use it. I don't know. It's, it's topic to discussion. Um, yeah, so those components like, um, like MS Pluton or Intel PPAM and, and other closed source 
um, supposed to provide additional security, but because it's closed, we cannot leverage that, and that's, that's our problem. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and as a last thing on the on the slide, I really recommend this presentation from um, Timothy Roscoe from ETH Zurich, uh, because he explained why we get why we get into that. Of course, it's a criticism of the operating system innovation, um, especially Linux, uh, but I really recommend that because to see some some other side of the equation, and how we get into the situation that we have all this TEE. And then we had to produce all these binary blobs and all these uh, additional peripheral microcontrollers to add the security features that we cannot use right now. Um, this challenge is maybe more positive one. There is a lot of activity around Calyptra. I don't know who, on, who knows what's Calyptra? Very little. Okay, so Calyptra is a project um, by Microsoft, Google, and AMD, and it's completely open source root of trust. Uh, first, uh, they first start getting OCP. Uh, it's everything is open, like RTL, uh, the ROM, the first mutable code which is running is everything is open, and they want to make it a standard. Um, like specification is open, so they want to make it standard root of trust which anyone can use. So this is good direction, um, but but the question is how attestation will look like in this environment, how Linux will leverage for leverage Calyptra for attesting um, what was what was booted and uh, how leverage will leverage information exposed by it. We have two more mechanisms which are associated with Calyptra. There is TCG dice, so this is like a new generation of TPM, but focused on providing identity. Uh, and SPDM, which is which is uh, for authentication of the devices and firmware running on those devices, and all those components uh, work together. It's it's well documented. It's there. There are very good specification from DMTF um, and OCP. But then I, I think there is lack of uh, lack of traction, and there was very very uh, just a couple hands. Uh, who knows what's going on? Challenge five. Um, it's a DRTM. And why, why it's, I think it belongs here? Because this is essentially resolving the problem of like semi-proprietary technology, which was like a trusted execution environment, um, very long closed, available for more than 20 years, but not in Linux yet. Um, so um, together with Oracle, we're trying to um, to contribute patches for like Oracle contributing patches for Intel, and we will try 3MD try to contribute patches for AMD. And what we learned, we already had 11th, uh, 11th version of the, of the patches. Uh, I don't know how much it, it takes, uh, five years or something uh, to, to upstream that. But what we learned so far? So we learned that we should always make sure to consider platform-specific challenges and architectural uh, alignment, like Intel versus AMD versus ARM, uh, uh, designed to, to create a robust ABI. Always conf uh, consider configuration impacts and documentation upfront, like K KSLR and IOMMU issues, which we get in the feedback. Check various compilers, despite uh, not uh, not everyone using that. There are some um, uh, there are some problems uh, that we didn't ensure that it builds successful successful or, or with all new features enabled, but also disabled. Um, Plan for all entry points. Despite 64-bit is used, like also, also make sure that legacy and 32-bit works. Uh, be willing to accommodate feedback and suggestion where possible. So we had a couple, couple uh, hot discussions in this series. Avoid tight coupling to a specific hardware. There was problem with TPM access and ways of accessing TPM. And I guess that's it for my side. And if you, if you think there is anything else, please let me know. And if you want to contact me, you can always send me an email. You have a mic? Yeah. Did I no miss question. did I miss anything? <laughs> is 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 there any other challenge in security? Maybe I missed something. Nobody agrees. <laughs> no questions. Oh. Can you explain why it's important to uh, support all these combinations of legacy boot protocols, 
like 32, 64 bit legacy boot. Where if you're introducing something new into the kernel, why is it so important that all these other 80 stack is still supported? Yeah, I, I guess that's a question to, to kernel maintainers who send this feedback. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know who precisely put put uh, that comment, but uh, yeah, we have Andrew wanting to comment that. Put it slightly bluntly, uh, all the rest of the open source world has had this for the eight years or so we've been trying to upstream it. Linux is the staunch holdout. Uh, that's why some of it looks the way it does, because we have been trying for eight years. We have two minutes. Yeah, I was wondering what is the difference between Open Titan and Calyptra? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't know precisely. I know there are some ideas to introduce Calyptra um, compliance uh, features into Open Titan. Maybe Open Titan will even become like a first reference implementation of Calyptra. Um, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm not so close with the project. I'm just fascinated about the openness of it and and I really agree, after many years working with AMD, ARM, like various ARM, um, and Intel root of trust provisioning and maintenance, I'm, I'm really uh, surprised about the freshness of Calyptra and correct approach there. So uh, th there is also, like Brian Kelly um, had a very good um, opinion about the project and leading very well, saying like, this is not the place for vendor value added stuff. So what, what destroyed many uh, root of trust technologies. Okay, sorry, time is out. Okay, well, last, last one, one question. I can make a comment about Open Titan since we- Sure, please. It. I mean, I think it's, it's following the same kind of trajectory of using open source, you know, open silicon and open source ROM and firmware across the board. In fact, Calyptra uses a lot of hardware IP from the Open Titan project. So there are, there are very a lot of commonalities between the two projects. So I think they're both sort of headed in the right direction. But uh, does, does Open Titan plans to be uh, Calyptra compliant? I, I think those discussions haven't happened, but probably hopefully they'll happen in OCP. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Time is out. Thank you, Piotr. Thank you. <laughs>